Hello again, my lovelies, and welcome to my channel. Today's Pro Revenge. I want over $5,000 in court after a car accident that I caused. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. Okay, so just a little bit of info before I get into the story. Also, sorry this might get a little long, but I hope it's worth it. I am 22 male work construction and run a few crews and I'm foreman because I've been working in this field since I started working summers when I was 14. That's legal in my state. With this being said, I have a lot of experience and get paid really well. For my job, I need a truck that can pull a lot of trailers and also get into a lot of sketchy job sites, especially in the winter. So I drive a new lifted pickup F350. Anyways, let's get into it. So about four months ago now, I got off work one day and just really didn't feel like making dinner. So I decided to go get myself the trusty Big Mac at McDonald's. Well, after I got my order, I was going to pull out into the parking lot to drive home. And I was looking hard over my left to see how busy the road was before I got over there. Well, I wasn't paying great attention to what was happening in front of me, and as I was creeping forward, someone who was in front of me was stopped and not paying attention either. I ended up barely hitting his mirror and scraping his door with my front end. I immediately reversed and hopped out. I made sure the guy was okay and apologised, knowing it was my fault, and I asked him if he wanted to call the cops. Let's call him Brent. Brent says, nah, bro, we're all good. If you can just get me your insurance info, I think we can get this taken care of. I was fine with that, as there was no damage done to my truck, and it's not required to call the cops for an accident if it occurs in a private parking lot. This is relevant later. We exchange info, and he seems pretty cool, so I tell him to go get the damage bid, and I'll just pay in cash so my insurance rates don't go up as long as he's okay with it. He says that's fine, and we both just leave, and I feel like a moron. But all in all, Brent seems like a cool dude, and I just hope we can get it sorted out smoothly. About a month passes by, and I haven't heard anything from Brent or the shop I told him to go to. Honestly, I wasn't too stressed about this, because if he decided to not get it done, that's on him. Well, he calls me up one day at about noon saying he can't remember my name and he wanted to tell the guys at the shop who sent him there because it seemed like we knew each other. I told him my name and the guys at the shop gave him a deal. Pretty sure they say this to everyone, lol. He sends me the bid for damages and it comes out to $2,403. This was more than I imagined, but I said to get it done and I'd take care of the bill afterward. And that was that. He hung up and said it was cool, and I went on with my day as usual. Another month goes by, and I don't hear anything, until Brent calls me up while I'm at work again and says, Hey brother, talk to the shop, and they said they can't get me in for another two weeks or so, and they may end up charging me more if they find more damage. I say, Okay, sounds good, just let me know, man. I hope it goes smooth for you, and I'm really sorry for the inconvenience. He seems to take it good, and I'm really trying to just be a good person. He responds with, Well, after talking to my wife, I'm okay if you just wanted to write a check for $2,500, and we can call it even. This seemed odd to me, because why the hell wouldn't he want their vehicle repairs all paid for? I say, Okay, man, let's set a time and place to meet, and I'll get you paid. He liked the idea and ended the call by telling me he would let me know. Yet another month passes by and I hear nothing again. At this point I'm getting fed up and just want this situation to stop being over my head. He hits me up at 11pm one night and asks if we can meet in town. I found this kind of disrespectful because I was nearly asleep and had to be at work at 5am the next day. Either way, I said that was fine and took my $2,500 cash and wrote up a quick contract saying this payment would be accepted as payment in full for the damages and by accepting it, it would release me from any and all liability. This was a pretty fair contract, I believe, as it was the deal we had already made over the phone, just in writing. 
I get to the place we suggested as a meet-up spot. I give him the cash and he signs the contract, without hardly even reading it, and he didn't want the copy. This was a red flag to me, but I just assumed he really didn't care about it all that much, so I just send him the photo of the contract and go back home for some beauty sleep. As you can guess by now, another blinking month goes by with me just living life carefree and not a worry in the world about this stupid car accident. Well, I go to check my mail and I have a notice from this guy's lawyer that he is suing me for not paying after wrecking his car. This pissed me off, but I also knew I had plenty of text messages and a contract on my side. I immediately called Brent and he blocks my number. Luckily enough, my girlfriend works for a lawyer, so I get him updated and he said he'd love to help. He lets me know I saved my butt by writing that contract, as any contract worth over $500 is to be held up in any level court in my state. I immediately get to work on my revenge. I remember on the side of this guy's car he had a business logo, and I took pictures of the damage. So I hop online and get to the BBB to look up who owns this company, thinking that surely he couldn't own the business because he is such an idiot. I was wrong. This guy owns the company, and I can see that he has about 12 one-star reviews, all in dispute because of his shady business practices, telling people it would cost one thing, and then charging them four times what he said it would. Sound familiar? Remember when he said the shop may charge more than the original 2,403? That's right. He was suing me for $10,000, four times what the shop told him it would cost. Unbelievable. He was trying the same sneaky stuff on me. My lawyer takes note of this and we show up in court, ready for war. This guy is sleazy. As we get there and all set up, he says, you ready to give me more of Daddy's money, with a smirk? I guess just because I'm young and drive a nice truck and could afford $2,500, lol. His lawyer gets up and starts trying to say BS from me hitting and running, and Brent barely got a picture of my license plate, to I tried bullying him into taking a deal for only $2,500, when the damage was clearly more than that. There were obvious holes in his story, and he really didn't have much to say. Just imagine the smile on my face as my lawyer lays out the printouts of our text messages and the physical copy of the contract which was signed by Brent. His lawyer was ghostly white and looked sick. After laying out all of the evidence, my lawyer pulled out a little hidden gem. The printouts of all the complaints we found on the BBB and how he was doing the same thing to me. That was the final nail in the coffin as the judge said he had seen enough. He asked Brent for any final statements, and Brent said, I don't even have the $2,500 anymore. Can I just get that and then we'll be okay? Literally admitting to the judge that he had received my money and his story was just a load of horse doo-doo. I thought his lawyer was going to strangle him. It was beautiful. The judge ended up ruling in my favour and demanded him to pay my legal fees as well as damages and lost wages because I had to miss work to be in court. The absolute sweetest part was that this particular day, my crew was on a very high wage job and I was technically the one getting paid before I paid them out as subcontractors. This means I was to be paid $475 per hour and this whole ordeal took about five hours. He ended up having to pay me almost $5,000 I don't think I've ever been so happy in my life. Sorry it was so long, but I just really felt the need to share. Thank you to anyone who made it this far. And thank you, my dear friends, for making it all the way to the end of this story. I really hope you enjoyed it because I think it's a classic example of karma biting back. Anyway, if you enjoyed, please like, subscribe and leave me a comment. Until next time. So long, farewell, pip pip, cheerio, much love, and bye.